Welcome back. So in the last lecture, I showed you how to solve the heat equation using the fast Fourier transform. Uh, and in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to solve the one-way wave equation and Burger's equation. Okay, so a linear wave equation and a nonlinear wave equation. So the first one we're gonna solve is, uh, is U T uh, plus C U X equals zero. At least I think that's the one I'm solving. Let's double check. Um, okay, good, that's the one I'm solving. So basically, if I have some wave, uh, some initial condition u, this wave is just gonna travel from left to right with some constant speed c. Uh, that's, that's just the linear wave equation. And what we're going to do is just like before, we're gonna Fourier transform this u variable with respect to x, and we're gonna solve this in terms of u hat, this function of a spatial wave number k and time t. Okay, and so we're gonna use this relationship here that says that ux, uh, when I Fourier transform, becomes i times kappa times u hat. So if I Fourier transform this, I get u hat time derivative equals minus c times i times kappa times u hat. Okay, maybe I could have put my i outside, it doesn't matter. It's you know minus i times c times kappa times u hat. This is the right hand side for my ODE integrator. And I'm just gonna solve this, I'm gonna solve this system of ordinary differential equations uh, using ODE 45 in MATLAB. Okay, so really simple. Uh, just like before, I'm gonna define a domain. This time my length of the domain is 20 from minus 10 to 10. I'm defining my kappa variables. I'm gonna define an initial condition, which is a hyperbolic secant. This is basically just a Gaussian function in X. Uh, and u hat naught is the Fourier transform of that initial condition. Happens to also be a Gaussian. Fourier transform of a Gaussian is always a Gaussian. Okay, and then all the, the kind of real computation is happening here where we actually run ODE45 on this particular vector field. Uh, so we have the right-hand side wave. We're gonna lock in kappa and C, um, the, the vector of frequencies and the, the wave speed C. And we're gonna make this just a function of time and the state vector U hat that we're integrating. Uh, and then we're gonna integrate through a time vector T starting from initial condition U hat naught. Okay, and just like before, we have to define this right-hand side. So this function du hat dt, just the time derivative of my, my Fourier transform variable u hat, and it's super simple. It's just minus c times i times kappa times u hat. And again, because kappa is a vector of frequencies, I have to take kappa dot times u hat to get kappa one, u hat one, kappa two, u hat two, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's my right-hand side vector. Really simple, we're just going to always work in the Fourier domain, we're working in U hat space. And then once we've solved this PDE, we're gonna inverse Fourier transform and recover uh, our function U as a function of space and time. Okay, so let's run this. Um, pretty simple. Okay, it runs really fast. And now I'm gonna plot it just like before, I'm gonna plot a waterfall plot. Ooh, did that not like? Okay, it did not like my, let me just run this again. Oh, this is always dangerous uh, to code live. What did I change? Um, error patch, it doesn't like this being complex. Okay, good, so I'm going to, remember when you inverse Fourier transform uh, this function, it should be real valued, like I can't have a wave, I can't have this real valued PDE give imaginary solutions, but when I inverse Fourier transform, I might get machine precision complex numbers. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a real, I'm gonna take the real part of you, it should be like almost entirely real, but I'm gonna kill all of those tiny, tiny complex parts. Hopefully that fixes everything. Ah, perfect, okay. So now this is what my wave equation looks like in a waterfall plot. And I'm just gonna rotate this so it's a little bit easier to see in space and time. So you can see my original kind of Gaussian in, as time evolves, this just moves from left to right at a constant speed. There's no deformation, there's no diffusion, nothing is happening except this wave is being carried from left to right uh, with no deformation. That's the linear one-way wave equation. That's what this 
PDE does. And you see that our FFT solution is exactly capturing that, that basic behavior. So that's really good to see. Okay. Uh, there's another way of plotting this in a movie, which I think is kind of nice. So you can see this thing moving from left to right. I'll just play that one more time for you. Moving from left to right. Okay, good. Uh, so simple. I can basically solve my PDE by mapping into the, into the Fourier domain, taking the Fourier transform in space, simulating this Fourier transformed variable uh, equation forward in time using ODE45. It's easy because now I don't have to approximate these derivatives with like a finite difference scheme or something awful like that. I can just use this nice spectral derivative, which is very accurate. And then when I'm done, I can always inverse Fourier transform and recover my system. Okay, so that's quite nice. You'll notice this line 24 and 23 says alternatively we can simulate in the spatial domain. Technically, technically, I don't actually have to Fourier transform this and solve my u hat forward in time. I could technically solve this equation ut equals minus c u x in space uh, and in time, but then I'd have to approximate this derivative. And I could, of course, do that with a finite difference, central difference, or some, you know, some stenciled uh, finite difference derivative, but that would be inaccurate and expensive and just a pain. So instead, what I'm going to do in this uh, right-hand wave spatial, this is the right-hand side if I solve my ODE up here. So in the first example, I solved my ODE down here. That's the first example. In the second example, I'm going to show how to solve my ODE up here without Fourier transforming. But the trick is to approximate ux, I'm going to take my, my variable u, I'm going to Fourier transform, I'm going to compute the derivative in the Fourier transform domain using this, and then I'm going to inverse Fourier transform to get my derivative ux. So I'm still going to use my, my Fourier transform to approximate this derivative, but then I'm just going to simulate this ODE. I'm just going to say that the state of my system is u of x, and I'm going to simulate this ODE forward, but using the uh, FFT to compute this derivative. Okay, so that's also totally fine. The reason I'm showing you this is because this is how we're going to solve the Burgers equation, which is nonlinear, where we can't solve it all in the Fourier domain. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Uh, now we're solving this wave equation using this uh, line 24. We're simulating in space. And if I did everything right, nothing should change. Okay, same exact, uh, same exact behavior of the wave equation. Okay, so technically I can solve it in frequency domain or in space, but I can use, um, to some extent, it's more efficient to do it, to simulate it in here, because I only Fourier transform in once, then I solve this with ODE485, and then I only take an inverse Fourier transform when I want to come back to real space. Whereas when I solve it up here, I'm constantly Fourier transforming and inverse Fourier transforming every time step to compute this derivative. So that's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can do it. Okay, and so in the last example, I'm going to sh uh, show you how to solve the Burgers equation, which is a nonlinear uh, a nonlinear PDE, so maybe I'll change colors. This is uh, ut plus u times ux equals nu times uxx. So this is Berger's equation, uh, well known to be the most delicious of all one-dimensional PDEs. And what I'm going to do first of all is we're going to just kind of ignore this diffusion term. And if you just had ut plus uux equals zero, it would look a lot like this wave equation, except the wave speed would be proportional to the amplitude of the wave. So if I have, if I start with that Gaussian here, the higher the point, the faster it's moving to the right. And so everything is going to move to the right, but the higher points are going to move to the right faster than the slower points. And so they're going to stack up on top of the slower points, and eventually they're going to form these sharp shock waves. Okay? So Berger's equation is a nice model of how shocks form uh, in, in fluid systems, for example, like real shock waves, where you get this kind of infinite, uh, sharp, infinitely sharp wave front because the wave speed is proportional to the amplitude, and so these higher points overtake the slower points. Okay? Uh, and this is numerically unstable to simulate unless you add this diffusion term. This is called a regularizer. This, this is a, a regularizing diffusion, regularizing uh, diffusion. 
And so what that does, we know that this heat equation, the diffusion operator, hates high frequency Fourier modes. It hates high frequency stuff and it tries to kill or diffuse those high frequencies out. And so when this shock starts to form, if I have this diffusion here, if it becomes too steep, this term kicks on and it kind of balances it out. So this uh, diffusion term fights this nonlinear convection. And so what we get is you still get this kind of formation of shocks, but they don't become infinitely steep. They only become kind of this finite shock width here that's balancing the diffusion and, uh, and the convection. Okay, so a really fun, kind of useful, nonlinear one-dimensional PDE, we're gonna solve it the exact same way using the FFT. Except now I can't work only in the spatial domain or only in the Fourier domain. I can't pick one and only work in those domains because, for example, this product, if I Fourier transform, is gonna get really nasty. It's gonna be some kind of nasty convolution. So what I'm gonna do is, just like uh, in my second example, I'm going to solve this PDE in the spatial domain. I'm going to solve this PDE. This is going to be my state vector u, and I'm going to time step it using ODE45. But I'm going to approximate all of these derivatives by taking the fast Fourier transform. Okay, so that's what we're doing here in this right-hand side burgers. Just uh, walk us through. Uh, this is my pseudocode for the PDE right here. Uh, okay, so what do we do? We take u and we Fourier transform it to get u hat. Then we compute the first and second derivative, du hat and ddu hat, the first and second derivatives. And then I inverse fast Fourier transform those to get in space ux and uxx. And now I can build this right-hand side minus u times ux plus nu times uxx. Okay, pretty simple. I'm just using the fast Fourier transform to approximate the derivatives, but I'm actually writing down, you know, this right-hand side in real spatial units. So I, I Fourier transform in, I compute my derivatives, and I Fourier transform out to build this right-hand side. So again, not super efficient, right? I'm doing two Fourier transforms every time step, but it's a very, very accurate way of approximating these derivatives. It's like the most accurate you can get to approximate these derivatives is to be doing this in the Fourier domain. And so just like all of the examples, I have some spatial domains, some kappa frequencies, some initial condition, and we ODE45, this Burgers equation. Okay, so I'm gonna run all of that right now. Good, and I'm gonna plot this as a waterfall. So I think this looks really neat. You can see this shock steepening. Okay, so you can see that you started with that Gaussian, uh, but very, very rapidly what happens is this front starts to form and it starts to steepen up, but it can't get too steep because of this, uh, this, this linear diffusion, this regularizing diffusion can't let it get too steep because if it got too steep, these high frequencies would, get, would decay faster than they can form. That's, the, that's this balance, this formation of shocks and this is dissipating my shocks. Okay. And similarly, we can plot this movie in time. This looks pretty cool to see that shock forming. I'll play that one more time for you. Okay, so you can see the shock forming in time. Okay, good. So I hope that what I've convinced you of is that you can solve PDEs efficiently using the fast Fourier transform, and there's a few ways you can do it. If you're lucky, like in the heat equation, or in this one-way wave equation, you can map directly into the Fourier domain and you can solve everything in the Fourier domain because it's linear, essentially, because your PDE is linear. Uh, you can simulate this in the Fourier domain. Your derivatives become essentially multiplications by a kappa vector, okay, or a kappa squared vector. And then when you're done, you inverse Fourier transform to get back to your real spatial uh, solution. You can also use this for nonlinear PDEs like the Burgers equation, but in this case, you're only using the FFT to approximate these derivatives. Okay, so you kind of take your state, you map into the Fourier domain, you compute your derivatives, and then you map back into the real spatial domain where you can build this right-hand side uh, of, your, of your system. So in all of these cases, what you're doing is you're taking your system state U, which is a big vector for every instant in time, this is a vector of u at all of your spatial locations, and you're stepping that forward in time using ODE45, or you're taking your vector of Fourier coefficients, also at every instant in time, and you're stepping that forward with ODE45.
45. So that's basically what you're doing, is you're treating your, your PDE state U as a discrete state vector with n elements, either in space or in frequency components, and we're integrating those forward in time using ODE 45, uh, you know, essentially integrating these forward in time. And you could use different ODE integrators. You could use forward Euler, uh, an implicit scheme, some higher order ODE. You can use you know, any time stepper you like, essentially, to, to walk this state forward in time, depending on what accuracy and, and kind of what other properties you want for your system. Okay? But the real headline here is that you can use the Fourier transform to efficiently map into a space where you can compute these derivatives very, very accurately and efficiently. Okay, uh, yeah, so I encourage you to use this. If I were you, what I would do is try to solve uh, maybe the Navier-Stokes equations on a periodic domain. Um, this should be one line, one line, and two lines. Okay, so what you can do is you can try to solve the Navier-Stokes equations on a two-dimensional grid where you Fourier transform in X and in Y. Then you solve that big system of, of equations forward in time, uh, and you, you inverse Fourier transform. So that would be my recommendation for you if you want to practice this uh, and try it out. Okay, thank you.